Hello, I'm Larry Woods. Some years ago, a ranger composer at Duke Ellington was asked to assess the profundity and popularity of jazz, one of America's original contributions to the sphere of music. Said Ellington, if it sounds good, it is good. Well, for the past 50 years, the Berklee College of Music here in Boston has helped improvise and propagate the sound of modern jazz and contemporary music like no other institution in the world. In the process, it has become an international proving ground for musical discipline, expression, and creativity. Greatly revered by musicians and scholars, and essentially the farm system for music's multi-billion dollar industry, Berkeley is not, however, a household name, but maybe it should be. So for the next half hour, we're going to give you some reasons why. One, two, or one, two. Let's start with the expressive and spontaneous Back Bay Brass, a student ensemble formed and taught by Ben Elkins, himself a Berkeley grad, class of 68. The controlled, frenetic energy of this veteran trombonist slash professor who jabs and grabs and coaxes music out of the air is typical of the tutelage some 350 faculty members provide the music-addicted student body, which numbers right at 2,900. These young jazz makers pay $20,000 a year, including tuition, room and board, and incidentals, to perfect their skills, pursue their dreams. So when they come to play, as that sports cliche goes, they really come to play. That's coming. I need, a, I need that cut mute just a little bit more. The varied ensembles, some 350, are to Berkeley students what computers are to those surfing the net. From the Back Bay Brass to the seductive tempo of Latin rhythms requires only a few steps down the hall, but the percussion-driven music makes the trip inviting. This is the realm of Victor Mendoza. Like others, he is a dedicated instructor. Teaching is key to Berkeley's success, so much so that today, 86% of their graduates work in the music field. Berkeley students for generations have thrived on playing together and playing with the best. In the 50s and 60s, when jazz started to mushroom into a thriving industry, the small college at the corner of Mass Ave and Boylston became a magnet for serious musicians. If you wanted an MBA in business, you went across town to Harvard. If you wanted to learn music, you went to Berkeley. Lawrence Burke, shown here on piano with the Joe Hines Orchestra in 1925, and who was playing professionally at the age of 13, founded the school in 1945. His love of music was forged in the clubs and theaters of places like Scully Square, even though he was an MIT graduate. Burke and his staff, many of whom were GIs returning from the war, as were the students, believed in hands-on instruction from the outset. Then as now, students supplemented their meager incomes with gigs at local hangouts. As the school's prestige grew, jazz masters like Stan Kenton and arranger Pete Rugolo would drop by for a lecture or performance, as would the great Count Basie, 
whose presence only added to the luster and credibility of Burke's dream. By the mid-50s, students abroad itching to study jazz began to arrive at Berkeley in large numbers, and they kept coming. Today, roughly 40% of the institution's total enrollment is composed of international students from 75 countries. The large influx of aspiring musicians from around the world is not only challenging, says college president Lee Elliott Burke, but understandable. Jazz is America's music, and America's music is the world's foremost music. Jazz is very much associated with America's values of freedom and democracy. And asking students to please come to Boston, regardless of nationality, doesn't cost a dime, says Burke. We have the best recruiting program in the entire world, and it's called Word of Mouth recruiting. Once snubbed as a specialty shop or diploma mill, the students today who chill out on Berkeley Beach, their name by the way for a strip of sidewalk in front of the college, take pride in attending what's being called the MIT of pop, the Juilliard of jazz. <laughs> they come to Berkeley very focused, very serious about music, and hungry to better themselves. Case in point, the Vincent Borjak Trio, whose performance at last year's Monterey Jazz Festival took top honors. Borjak, a 22-year-old pianist from France, along with Canadian Ian Martin and New Yorker Steve Haas, says the Berkeley experience has been everything they expected. Well, I had, I had a friend of mine, a bass player uh, from my hometown in Bordeaux, who went to Berkeley 10 years ago. And he told me, uh, you got to go there, you know, you're going to play with a lot of musicians. The level of a musician is really high, so. I've found that Berkeley's been a pretty, it's been competitive, but a friendly competition. Um, it seems to nurture an atmosphere of growth. Yeah, there's, there's a sense of competition, but like he said, it's, it's healthy. It, it makes you hit the practice room a little more, you know. And uh, it's, all the drummers, we all get together and share ideas, you know. The drive for excellence, the devotion to their craft, is universally accepted in this environment, but it begs the question, is Berkeley for everyone? No, Berkeley's not for everyone. Berkeley is a, a different way of thinking. I mean, we all call ourselves musical geeks. I'm a musical geek, yes. Yeah. Very much so. What does that mean? It means you pretty much devote all of your time to your instrument and to your music and just continually wanting to get better and pretty much do nothing else. You know what I'm saying? Somewhere at the outset of what F. Scott Fitzgerald called the Jazz Age, circa 1918-1920, musicians hooked on this complex music form embarked on a stylization that forever transformed the genre of jazz. They started to improvise, to search for a melodic freedom and harmonic phrasing that expanded the richness of a song or a solo. Here at Berkeley today, they teach that magic. And this is how it works. And da, 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 da. Sing that for me. Da, 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 da. In Rick Peckham's ensemble class, where students play only the compositions of jazz legend Thelonious Monk, it starts simply with five notes and gradually takes form. Let's hear it. One, two, a one, two, three. Four. As any jazz lover knows, it takes a melody and pattern to reach the next level, which Peckham provides. So. Before the solos kick in, he explains why this approach lends itself to learning improvisation. Thelonious Monk is famous for, for teaching tunes that way. He would sing them or play them, more likely play them on the piano, and uh, uh, the band would have to pick it up from what he was doing. <laughs>
I don't know about you, but to me, all, improvisation should be all about ear-to-hand coordination. And it should be all about mastering the basics, too, as assistant professor John Finn stresses to his guitar students. <laughs> Roughly one in every three students study guitar at Berkeley, largely because of the instrument's universal popularity, largely because many of them long to be rock stars. Interestingly, says Finn, a good proportion arrive with great playing skills, but cannot sight read. See how that works? Most guitar players don't see it as a necessary task to learn to read to play guitar well. But to be music students, they do need to re learn to read well. Not because it will advance your career, but it will because it will make you a better music student. You'll get more out of the classes. The classes will mean more. Jill Corcoran, 19, who reads music, incidentally, probably speaks for all 900 guitar players at Berkeley when asked to explain why this music is so important in his life. More than likely, I just like the way it sounds, I can groove to it, I suppose. It's fun. Would you it's like to fun. become a great, great guitar player one day? Oh, sure. Definitely. In time, says Finn, his guitar wizards will go from this to the artistry of Gennaro Landry, also a student. B, 1 plus I, to the end. It is not all modal scales and harmonic adventures. 20% of the curriculum is devoted to general education, and math is a must. All students, especially those from abroad, are expected to be proficient in English and creative writing. The White House, interestingly, is not as powerful as you might think in this... History classes explore a wide range of subjects, from early America to modern-day dilemmas. You guys agree with that one? You like? Berkeley offers a total of 12 majors pertinent to the music field. And the college became fully accredited in 1973. Since its opening a half century ago, 30,000 students from the U.S. and 75 countries have come through its doors. First of all, you study that face. Absolute delight just to study that face. And, no and students say it's equally rewarding to take Professor Henry Tate's art history classes, where he routinely shares his vast knowledge of the treasures in Boston's Museum of Fine Arts. A standing laboratory of sorts, Berkeley administrators appreciate having close by. Dr. Charles Combs, chairman of the General Education Department, says students enter and leave Berkeley expertly grounded in music. But he adds, We try to you know, supplement that with uh, things that are going to make them competitive as human beings for the rest of their lives, being able to have a good life, communicate well, make, make ethical judgments, uh, all the other stuff that, that they're going to need to do in the music industry, whether they're educators or whether they're uh, performers. Our students are going to reach millions of people. They're going to influence through their art. They're going to influence the thinking of a lot of kids. And it better be good. <laughs> Not all students attend Berkeley to master an instrument. Many come to explore the potential of music technology, where Berkeley offers the state of the art in high tech tools used today in songwriting, composition, and film scoring. Three years ago, the college established 40 computer synthesizer workstations, where students can work on everything from original scores to commercials. Now, all entering students are required to take at least an introductory course in music technology. Ronil Almario from the Philippines is so consumed by his drive to excel that he set up a small work area in his apartment two blocks from the main campus. Headed for a career in producing and songwriting and on course to graduate with honors, Almario says Berkeley has given him supreme confidence to compete in tomorrow's music world. I see some people who are good, but they don't have that confidence. If you have that confidence in you, 
I don't think that competition anywhere will matter. If you know that you're good. Are you, you know, good? I am. And you know that? I know that. What passion cannot music raise or quell? In the confines where Dennis Montgomery teaches gospel music, that question is unspoken but never ignored. Montgomery is a minister and a Berkeley grad, and throughout the year, he takes energetic voices and makes them stronger. If aspiring musicians see Berkeley as an investment for the future, the college astutely invests in students too. Example, Isola Johnson and Vernon Messam. Never to walk in anyone's shadows. Both from Boston, they received full tuition scholarships for four years after competing in the college's inner city music program last summer. It is the greatest love of all. Isola just turned 22, has a three-year-old son to care for, and works three days a week to make ends meet. Berkeley has changed her life, and she dares not fail. By being here, I think it will help me because I haven't, I've never had any um, theory or ear training or anything like that. So I just want to do my best here, you know, make, make my stay here look the best for scholarship recipients for the future. If I fail, if I succeed, at least I'll live as I believe. No matter. Say 9.30 to 10.30, maybe 10.15. 10 of the many pluses students inherit at this college, maybe the most prized is access and admission to the Berkeley Network. Music is largely a networking profession. Securing a job often comes down to who you know as well as what you know. As the college president likes to point out... This is one of the reasons why it's so important for so many musicians to come here to Berkeley. We simply have the largest network for referrals of uh, any other family in the music industry. They also have some wonderful talent waiting in the wings, waiting for that break, waiting to come front and center in the months and years ahead. Here then is a Berkeley sampler of tomorrow's jazz makers.
so there you have it, a little known college with a colossal reputation. Contemporary popular music from rap to reggae, rock to pop, gospel to jazz is an integral part of America's social fiber. And as you can see, if Berkeley continues to influence these art forms and the entertainment industry in general, then as we head into the 21st century, contemporary music will remain good because it will sound good. And the judgment of Duke Ellington will live on. Thank you for joining us. I'm Larry Woods in Boston. Larry Woods.